Hello and welcome to Tear Matsing Adventures. Hey, it's Lisa here and I have found that this video, the sound didn't work. So I'm gonna do a voiceover and tell you all about making this amazing cauliflower steak recipe that I picked a fresh cauliflower from the garden today and I'm going to use. So this recipe's on Cookie Do. How amazing is it that Cookie Do allows you to search for an ingredient? Now, if you're at the moment not quite sure how to find this recipe, which is from the US Cookie Do, uh, it's a great time now to update your filters. And to do that, there is a little video on YouTube that I put together. It's 22 seconds on how to do that. You'll notice this is in Fahrenheit. You'll see 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So it does indicate that this is a US recipe. To find out, I guess, how to do this on your oven, the best bet is to actually put it into Google or Siri and say, hey, what does this equal? So I've preheated my oven to 180 degrees, uh, ready to go for this recipe. I've also put into my oven the other day I made a beautiful big batch of um, chicken little niblets that were on sale at our local shop. And I made the barbecue Korean sauce to go with that. So they were due to expire, so I cooked them straight away. And then I've had them in the fridge waiting to reheat and put the sauce over as well. If you've not tried that recipe, oh my goodness, it's amazing. So yeah, preheat your oven 180 degrees if you're in Australia, ready to go for this recipe. Now, um, shortly you're going to see the beautiful cabbage and hopefully soon, it's a little bit hard voicing over to my own uh, recipes. By the way, if you haven't yet, please do say hi, it tells Facebook that you are enjoying these videos and to keep putting it in the news feed. You'll also notice that um, in the evenings about 7.15, 7.30, the replays go up uh, on YouTube and this is where you'll actually see the final product both at the beginning of the end of the video. Uh, sometimes I don't have the time during the day with uh, the family around to get it up as a video, as a, sorry, as an image on Facebook. So if you're ever wondering what does this look like, being able to jump over there and look in the evenings, that's where you'll find it. So baking sheet with parchment paper is the next step. Now you'll see I've got the rose gold medium tray from the mix shop with a silicon liner on it again from the mix shop. These days there are different sizes available. So there's a small, which is smaller than that. There's the medium, there's a large, and they've recently brought out an extra large, which I love. It is full size. It's kind of nearly 90 centimeters, fits perfectly in my oven. So we're going to now um, go into the recipe. And you'll see it normally tells you to do this in a small bowl. But, um, oh no, hang on, sorry, I need you astray. It's telling you to slice up your cauliflower into one inch, which is about two, two and a half centimeters, straight through the center. Now you usually get two or three slices nicely of that width but you'll have the outside that is a different kind of, they fall apart pretty much because it's that outside bit. So, um, yep, slice it up. A little tip, if you're growing home growing ones, or even if you want to clean your ones up from the supermarket, put them in water, soak them once you, you can either do it whole or sliced like I have, and then put some vinegar and some salt into it. If there's any little creepy crawlies in there, um, they don't like it, they die and they come out of it. So, you need to soak it for about half an hour to get the little bugs out of it and ready to go. And you can see mine's a purple headed cauliflower um, and it's not very white, it's quite green, but it is cauliflower, it's not, not broccoli. So that's a really cool way. And then once you've done that, rinse it off and I just rinse it in the Varoma. And the tray that's underneath the Varoma at the moment capturing the drips is actually the thermoserver lid. Okay, so um, that's a really great tool. So your thermoservers are super handy. I use mine multiple times a day for different things. Uh, and including just the lid to be a drip tray underneath. Okay, so contains that liquid for you. All right, so moving along with the recipe next. So it tells you in a small bowl to mix these things together, but I don't have the powdered ingredients of garlic and onion because they tend to get too sticky here and set really hard if I don't use them straight away in our humid climate here in Southeast Queensland. So I do buy them and when I buy them, I use them quite quickly so they don't set solid. But in today's case, you're going to see me use paste. So I've got garlic paste and I've got a fresh purple onion to use instead because that's what I've got. All right, so it does change this recipe up a little bit, but it means I'm going to put them straight into the thermi bowl and make a bit of a marinade with it in the thermi bowl. This is what's going to get coated on those beautiful cauliflower chunks. So first things first is you've got your one tablespoon of sweet paprika. In that goes, you could use smoky. There's no reason why. And it just would change that final flavor, obviously, but no one else is going to know that that's what it is. Then we've got half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, or you could use fresh turmeric, right? You cut off, say, I don't know, a third of a, a little centimeter of turmeric and chuck that in. Don't worry about peeling your turmeric, chuck it in as it is. 
Then you've got your garlic powder. This is what I don't have, so I'm putting in um, half a teaspoon of garlic paste. We do have garlic. Those of you who watched my garden tour this morning, you'll know that we've got garlic growing, but it's not ready yet. It's probably still six months away. Can't wait to make it again. Making your garlic paste is amazing. Then you've got one teaspoon of dried cumin. You could, or oh, ground cumin, sorry. You could use um, your cumin seeds if you needed to. It just would change the texture a wee bit. But absolutely amazing. And the smell is divine in a moment when we get this all in. Now we've got one teaspoon of onion powder. So this is where I'm using a little bit of purple onion. Okay, it's only probably about 30 grams. It's not much. And then one teaspoon of curry powder, your preference on curry powder, whatever that is. Okay, so I've got the good old kings. But if you've got babas or anything like that, you can make your own curry powder as well. Some cookie do, which is pretty cool. It's just one teaspoon of this. Now I would suggest at this point adding salt. I forgot to, all right, but we did put it on when we served it. But I'd really say put, say half a teaspoon of salt into this, maybe even some pepper. It tastes amazing. We just had to do ours out the oven because I forgot. I did talk about it uh, and I forgot. So, all right, now we're gonna jump out of the recipe. We're gonna use, by pushing on the little house key on the top corner, it takes us out of the recipe and we're gonna manually do it. So, we're going to, Put on in a second, five seconds. All right, I'm showing you first of all before we do that, how to rotate through. So did you know you can push the silver button to actually rotate through the time, the temperature and speed. So if you've got yucky fingers, putting that through is really easy. So you see I put five seconds on, push the silver dial, it goes temperature, and then I can go up to speed, which I'm gonna to go to speed five. So go up to straight up to a speed when you're manually cooking or making. I want to be, oh no, seven, speed seven, my goodness. Five seconds, speed seven is what I should have said. So much easier when the microphone works during recording. All right, so the other thing I want to show you is if you've got a timer left, so say you've got seconds left, you can actually swipe them off the screen. Same with your temperature. If you want to take your temperature back to zero, swipe it off the screen. You will notice that a little number still appears, like if you've got a temperature, say your bowl is at 50 degrees still, it will remain at that 50 degree little number, but the big bit will swipe off. Look at that, isn't that marinade beautiful in there? Yum, pushing the green little button at the top will take us back to our recipe and it tells you what to do. So at this point in time, I actually would love to have added this oil because I've got wet ingredients in this marinade already. Putting that oil in would be actually a really smart idea. I didn't, instead I took some scoops of the mix out and I've spread it on the cauliflower. Um, but I actually think now in hindsight, putting that oil into it and making it more of a pourable oil would, would be wise in hindsight. So at this point in time, we're gonna scrape some of this out, we're gonna put it on our steaks. And it smells amazing by the way, I just remember opening that lid going, oh my goodness, like the cumin, the curry powder, the garlic, just as divine. So there's my steaks, lying them out on the tray. I'm gonna drizzle with some olive oil, or oil of preference. What I did do though, is I left behind in the Varoma the little bits, because I'm actually gonna put them in and toss them in the bowl. So if you have trouble slicing your steaks, or maybe you're, maybe you're using frozen cauliflower from the frozen section, um, I would put them in the bowl and put it on reverse, which you'll see me do in a second with the leftovers, the little bits, um, and it will actually coat itself in the bowl. So shortly I'm gonna take out chunks to put on the steaks that are there, but then you'll see me put the remaining back in the bowl and coat it. So here's the oil going on top of the beautiful steaks on the tray. Here comes the beautiful mix. Smells amazing. You can see me going, oh my gosh, yum. Out with some of that. I do leave some behind purposely, okay? I just put a couple of chunks on each steak. I come back with a spoon shortly and spread that around. So that goes. Okay, so I have just left some in the bowl and I reckon if you added some oil to it, it would be absolutely amazing. Um, I think if back there, before we actually started taking any out, put the oil into it, make it into that really juicy marinade. Um, and then you can either pour it over your, your big florets that are ready, or you can uh, put your florets in, especially if you've already got them broken up, and coat them on reverse. So putting it on reverse, you'll see I just press the reverse button underneath the zero speed, and we're gonna just put that on. I haven't set a timer, you'll notice it's counting up really slowly. 
um, it's what going to go for about five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds. You'll see it's going around now. I'm going to show you what that looks like, and it's coding for me. So when you do have smaller things, getting it to code for you is just so much easier. Um, so that's done. It took 15 seconds. It probably didn't need 15 seconds, but I was coating the rest of the beautiful steaks over there anyway. So next up, we're going to keep coating those steaks. You may need to put a little bit more oil on top. Uh, if you're not looking like they're a bit dry, look at that. By the way, I had these for lunch today. They're amazing. You're going to be so impressed when you make them. Um, so, and even that chunk there, I think would have been far better in hindsight to actually have chopped in half and put in that bowl instead. They're those outer chunks that you, know, you get your two big or three big steaks out of the centre, but then you've got those outside bits that tend to fall apart. So, um, yeah, I reckon next time anything that's not those massive big steaks goes back into the bowl. So covering it with the spoon now, the smell was just amazing. Spreading it around. And then next up, we're going to get out of the bowl those leftovers and put them there on the tray as well. By the way, if I wanted to delete the 15 seconds off the screen, swiping down on that, if, you know, we mentioned it before, but just another re-mention to hopefully make sure it cements in, would actually, if you swipe down, it'll go back to zero. So you can see it's a sprinkle both sides with the paprika mixture. I didn't need to, I didn't, um, and it was fine as it was. So I just kind of rubbed it in because mine was so soft. What I do here though, uh, is I'm actually scraping up the sides and grabbing that little bit of um, mixture that's up the sides. So I'm just using the, the head of the cauliflower and swiping up and just making sure nothing goes to waste. It's such an amazing smelling, tasting mix. It's just divine. So it's gonna cook for 15 minutes in a 180 degree oven. Uh, we're utilizing our oven with the leftovers from the last few days as well, which is awesome. There comes out the leftovers and sit that down. So as I said, a little bit more oil if you need some oil, salt if you haven't salted it already, a bit of pepper, uh, and I forgot to do those things that had to be done on the way out of the oven as well. So it's just about done. Here we go, the oil. So because I put those ones in the bowl and they didn't get oiled, I'm just putting a little bit of more oil on those. If you've not tried this recipe, it is phenomenal, and I can I can highly suggest it. It's just something that is a little bit different, a little bit fancy. It'd be great for entertaining. There is a sauce recipe in this, and there is a a um a, a puree as well, where you actually put some of this roasted cauliflower back in the bowl and puree it with some tahini. I didn't make it. If you were entertaining with friends, you'd certainly want to do that. But for my purpose of family feeding, it doesn't really matter. By the way, this is done today with the limited edition black Thermomix TM6. Um, it's currently the 4th of July, uh, 2023. So if you're watching this later in six months time, this won't be available, but our classic white will be. So if I can help you get a black classic Thermomix or even the black limited edition or the white classic Thermomix, please do reach out if you live in Australia. I'd be absolutely honored to help you get one. Um, and please check in with your friends and family and make sure they know about the amazing black that's on offer at the moment. And also know that the Thermomix will really transform their kitchen. Uh, 36 months and just free is on at the moment as well. So it's $18.86 or something to get a TM6 on the bench. So, uh, but otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed today. I really hope, I'm sorry that the sound didn't work. Um, I hope you're feeling inspired to give this recipe a go. I'm so glad to be back after being sick. So thank you for your patience and your support during that period of time. Um, but I look forward to sharing more of what I make in my family mix with you guys because there is so much more like that's the beautiful thing about cookie do and being able to type in cookie into cookie do what you've got and just cook with the amazing ingredients you've got whether that's from your garden or whether that's from the shops uh, it doesn't really matter so thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time bye for now